I just hit the passive aggressive zenith. Played a YouTube video of someone eating crisps loudly while someone else ate crisps loudly because I can't be bothered to ask them to stop. What depths have you sunk to? I was on the receiving end of some epic passive aggression once. I was in the 12 items or less line at the grocery store, and as usual, had counted my items before I got in the line. An older couple got in line behind me, and clearly did not think I had done so. They spoke loudly to each other, I guess hoping to embarrass me. That doesn't look like 12 items to you, does IT, Marge etc. This continued on, and when it was my turn, one started let's count. 1, 2, 3. I started wondering if maybe I miscounted, feeling a little panicky as I usually try not to be a douchebag. Then finally, 10. Oh. The cashier laughed. I needed to do nothing. The backfiring of their plan was plenty. I would have grabbed three packs of gum and put them on the belt with my stuff just to frick with them after that little act. I used to be a resident advisor in a college dorm. One of the dorm activities was on personal hygiene, with free stuff available like deodorant, shampoo, razors, etc. One of my residents couldn't be bothered to speak with his roommates about his disgusting habits, but he sure took about a dozen of those flyers and put them up all over his roommate's side of the room. I bought my little bro a college how to guide called other people can smell you. My second job was in a cube farm in the IT department of a large telecom company. One of the guys used to check his voicemail with his speakerphone, with the volume set just slightly below maximum. My solution? I made eye contact with my co-workers, and one by one, we all dialed into our voicemail boxes, on speakerphone, with the volume set to maximum. In under a minute, the air was filled with robotic recorded prompts for passwords and airing voicemails for all to hear. Dude got the message. You should have called when he wasn't at work and left a message that said stop listening to your voicemail on speakerphone. It's inconsiderate and the entire office can hear you, then let him play the message one morning. The neighbor in my girlfriend's apartment will let their goddamn alarm go off for a good 5 minutes before they even try to stop it. They don't hit snooze like a normal person. They just lay there and let it buzz over and over and over again. It was going on longer than usual so I ended up pulling out my phone and turning on the meltdown alarm and basically pressing it directly into the wall. On top of the horrendously loud noise, it was also buzzing the whole wall. They turned their alarm off within 10 seconds and haven't done it since. If this ever happens again get a screaming meanie alarm from any truck stop, or online. It's 110 decibels of get the frick out of bed. Treat it like a grenade. Set it for one minute. It's a timer. And toss it in their window. It's brought people to tears because they couldn't turn it off. My old roommate's friend used to always come over and drink my cans of Pepsi. I'm on a pretty tight budget, but like to treat myself with said cans. So you can imagine how upset this made me. One day I hid all the cans but one, which I coated with nail biter. The second he realized something was wrong, he poured himself a glass of water using the only glass on the drying rack. The glass coated in nail biter. This is a new level of PA evil, and I love you for it. I live on a typical American suburb street. My neighbor just got a new job with a company provided vehicle. He has a one lane driveway so he parks this huge work van in the road, directly in front of my house. It is all I can see when look out the front window. I casually mention it to him how he could park in front of his house and not mine. He just chuckles to himself and starts talking about something else. For the next week I parked my car in front of his house to see if he enjoyed looking at my car every day. Luckily he got the message and now parks in front of his home and not mine. I hate anyone who drives an SUV truck with those bright as 30 freaking sun's headlights. They are the most obnoxious goddamn thing in the world. I was driving home one day from class when this guy came behind me, his headlights destroying my eyes. I was so mad. Not only did he have the obnoxious lights, but he was tailgating me hardcore. Now, I'm doing 15 over the speed limit and I'm not in the fast lane. He could pass me, but no. He just continues to tailgate me. There wasn't even another soul on the highway. Now, this is in New Jersey. On highways the state police don't just sit in their cars and keep their radar guns on. They only turn them on when they think they see someone speeding. So that radar detectors can't spot them from miles away. Well, 
I spot one sitting in the grassy middle part of the highway, facing my direction. So I proceed to turn on my signal, go in the fast lane. I get on my brakes hard. He slingshots past me and gives me this perplexed look. All of a sudden my radar detector goes crazy. The cop pulls out and pulls over the butthole. Frick you, truck. Maybe it isn't passive aggressive, but it felt great. I was at Costco once, and they had massage chairs at the end of the aisle, right by the crunches and folding wheelchairs etc. Two older women were complaining about me using it, making remarks about how I was abusing the equipment or some crap, so I struggled to get off the chair, gave a look of pain, and wheeled off in one of the wheelchairs. I kept one of my hands shaking and went right past them. Their faces were one of the best things ever. I blow kisses to angry drivers. I am a guy. On an airplane flight this past summer, the guy in front of me reclined his seat until he was practically resting his head on my chest. I politely asked him if he would please put his seat up. He just looked at me and said, number. I then turned my air vent on full blast and aimed it right at his face. When he reached up to adjust it, I pushed his hand away. Excuse me. That's my air vent. I like it that way. He ended up leaning forward the entire flight, but left his seat back reclined practically to my chest. We were both uncomfortable the entire flight, but neither of us would give in, as my wife put it. So, this is what happens when an inconsiderate butthole meets a passive aggressive dong. Strikes me more as aggressive aggressive. There's these two girls who sit behind me in one of my classes that don't shut up. No matter what my professor says, they always have to talk about it between the two of them. After doing this, it always leads into a longer discussion between them. It's freaking annoying because I'm actually interested in what my professor has to say. He tells some pretty interesting stories. One day, I had enough of it. When they started talking again, I took my laptop out and made a new Word document. I made the font large enough to where they would be able to read it and typed four simple words. Shut the frick up. I cleared my throat, very loudly, I should add, and just slightly moved out of the way to where they would be able to read it. That was two weeks ago and they haven't said a word in class since. I had the same problem in my philosophy class. For about a week I would type everything that they said. At the end of the week I handed them each a transcript of their conversations. In college I had the worst roommate. She would stay up all night, sleep all day long, and dramatically sigh or groan if I accidentally woke her up by, you know, being in my room during the day. She also could not shut up for 5 minutes at a time. She literally wandered around our room muttering to herself, mostly frickin' Jesus Christ, and if she wasn't doing that, she was sighing and groaning and slamming drawers shut. She also left food that should have been refrigerated out on her desk for weeks at a time, including stacks of burgers still in their paper wrapping. It smelled. Anyway, she mentioned once how she hated living in the dorms because she couldn't smoke in there. I casually brought up how my last roommate broke her contract and moved into a house mid-semester and she just loved it. New roommate got excited and started to look into getting an apartment. What I didn't mention was that it cost $1000 plus that month's dorm fee to break said contract. And apparently, she managed to sign up for this without noticing that fine print. Either, because for about a week after she had screaming matches on the phone with her mom about the money. A week later, she was gone, and I had the room to myself for the rest of the semester. It was great. I would feel bad. But living with a Tourette T.E.'s ridden burger hoarder was too much for me. Mine is a painful memory to relive but I'll do it for the sake of this thread. Me and my then university roommate shared this tiny room. With one double decker bed. A cupboard. Two tables and a mirror. The mirror is depressingly important in this story. It was opposite the bed. So that I. Sleeping on the top bunk. Could actually see what my roommate was doing under. You know where this is going. So one day I woke up to this horrible squelching sound. In my mind. I knew what it was. I just didn't want to entertain the idea. It must not be that. It cannot be. Furtively, I glanced at the mirror, knowing that the reflection would take a little bit of my soul. Sure enough, it was my roommate, and the my bunk, furiously masturbating in his boxes. I have never seen anyone jerk off that feverishly. It was almost beautiful, in some sick perverse way. Okay, so the problem was that he kept doing this. 
I kept waking up to the sound of a guy who watches Matrix Reloaded daily frantically jerking off in his boxes. Even worse, sometimes he'd let out an unsound that chills me to this very day. I cannot watch Japanese pee because of him. I didn't know what to do. Should I accept my fate and consider his morning wank as some kind of cruel alarm clock? One fateful day, I was woken up to the usual squelching sound and I decided that I had to do something about it. I just cleared my throat. He immediately stopped. And it was then that he knew I knew. We never spoke again and he moved the following semester. You sucker. I know you're on reddit. If you're reading this, I'm gonna come jerk off in front of you one day. Drunk. Bastard. Should have started moaning harder than him. If the other person feels even more awkward than you do, you win. I am a life sound tech. My job's success rate depends on me being passive aggressive. Oh, you turned up your guitar amp again? Cool. I hope you like me cranking the crap out of your guitar in your monitors now. But. Does this count? Drunk buttholes being loud outside residence building at some ungodly hour on a Sunday night. Hey, do you guys have a watch? A watch? Yeah, I need to know what time it is. Uh, 3.30. Oh cool. So now that you know it's 3.30, can you shut the frick up? I have a friend who talks about his gap year in Peru every chance possible. Now when he starts up with another Peru story I put on my most amazed look and say, I never knew you went to Peru. Whenever some butthole is tailgating me on the road I hit the windshield cleaner button and just hold it. Usually I can get a good consistent spray of water to obstruct their view. They usually change lanes after that. Bonus points for me if their windshield is dirty and their wipers are bad leaving behind a dirty muddy mess. Also if you are all in on this idea, you can take a pin and adjust the angle of one of your nozzles to spray directly over your car for maximum effectiveness. I had a wagon and it had a rear view sprayer, so I pulled it out and found the best angle to hit tailgaters right in the window. It was awesome. People would either get super mad and go into a rage, or most of the time start laughing and back off. I put three staples in my stapler at a time so people will stop using the one on my desk. There is an empty desk right next to me with a fully loaded stapler no one ever uses. I realize this is ridiculous. I was in Walmart once and this kid was screaming. I tried to ignore it. I thought about asking the parent to quiet the kid down. You could hear him through the whole store. Finally I just stood at the end of the aisle they were on and started screaming back at him. The mother was horrified, but after about 10 seconds of yelling back and forth the kid finally stopped. Applying the old adage of fighting fire with fire. Also I bet that confused the heck out of that kid. Or else he though is that what I sound like? The residents at the pool I work at complain about everything. Making the shifts that my co-workers and I work extremely trying on our patients. It eventually got to the point where a number of residents petitioned to get one of the guards written up because she was sucking a lollipop in an inappropriate manner while on stand. As head guard of the facility, all of these complaints went to me. Eventually I got sick of this and took action. What the residents didn't realize up until about halfway through the summer is that the pool they use has a number of small rules that no one really acknowledges, because honestly it's not worth anyone's time to enforce them. These rules include things such as enforcing designated areas to eat and a sort of blanket ban on alcohol. From the 25th of July on, under my authority, every guard was required to reprimand all residents on every single infraction, in order to give them a taste of their own medicine. I can honestly say that there is nothing more satisfying than having one of my guards stop a hated resident from enjoying a few drinks with whoever they're with, and then looking them right in the eye and just absorbing their hated. It's sublime. Dot. 3. My girlfriend had a roommate that would hang out with us when we were at the house hanging out. She would watch movies with us sometimes. Whenever something funny happened, she would laugh and immediately repeat the line she laughed at. This was annoying, but I'm in Michigan, so you aren't allowed to directly ask someone to stop doing something that's bothering you. They get mad. So I made it a drinking game and took a drink every time she did it. I got drunk pretty quick and ended up breaking her DVD player. Comma I'm in Michigan. So you aren't allowed to directly ask someone to stop doing something that's bothering you. It's the same way in Wisconsin. Us upper midwesterners are just too nice. We're like Canadians only fatter. When I was pretty young, 
maybe 13-ish, my younger brother, 11-ish, kept frustrating me by stealing my CD player and I was out for clever revenge. We had a CD recorded by a band from the local church called Flying Sheep, something something Jesus and flying animals, you know the drill. The first track on the CD was about 45 seconds of sheep noises. When he went to sleep, I snuck into his room quietly located my CD player, set it to loop track 1 and turned the volume way down. About every 5 minutes I'd sneak in again and turn the volume up a little more. I did this for about 2 hours until there was nothing but bleating sheep at full volume about 4 feet from his head. My brother slept like a log so he slept for a whole 7 more hours with sheep noises beamed directly into his brain. He woke up pretty angry. Apparently he had dreamt about trying to herd aggressive sheep all night long. Sweet revenge. That's funny bro because all I dreamt of was justice. If someone is really annoying me with what they are saying chewing loudly smacking gum loudly making annoying drum noises with their mouth. I will sometimes turn music on and slowly turn it up to the point where I can't hear them over it. Sometimes I will even look them dead in the eyes while I do it. Better than my sighing tactic. Bravo. Whenever my roommate shaves, he always leave little bits of hair in and around the sink. As other people's hair has always made me cringe, I repeatedly asked him to stop, but there would always be hair in the sink. So, I waited. For 3 months I grew my pubic hair to the most glorious length it has ever been and shaved it all off into the sink and left it. I haven't had any problems with my bathroom since then. For 3 months I grew my pubic hair to the most glorious length this is making me wonder if I should do some manscaping. Edit. Public hair my god how much one letter can change. Started doing heavy drugs so my wife would leave me. Man, you really committed to it. I was on a road trip with my grandparents, and we were sharing a hotel room. My grandfather has a really intense snore, and I couldn't take it anymore. So I leaned forward and clapped as loud as I could and pretended to be asleep. He immediately shot out of bed and walked around the room to investigate, leaving me just enough time to fall asleep before the snoring returned. I was at the aquarium of the Pacific where they have a cool projection on a sphere. While they were in the middle of their presentation this one lady kept taking pics of the projection with a flash. So in this dark room filled with people, every minute or so, she would take a flash photo. I eventually took a flash photo of her. She glared at me with some evil eyes, but she stopped with the flash photography. My family and I enjoyed the rest of the presentation. My roommate's GF moved in even though we agreed she wouldn't. If she did, then she would have to pitch in for utilities. They haven't so far. She's messy. Slams doors at night, etc. But the one thing that bugs me to death is this. They began hoarding their TP. Now, I'm all for sharing and whatnot. And I bought a 24 pack when we first moved in. The two of us being male. We go through maybe one roll every two, three weeks. Now that she's moved in. We've gone through the 24 pack in 2 months. I went ahead and bought another 6 pack. All gone. I decided to stop buying TP. In hopes they would start buying some. Last week. We ran out of TP. Fine. I'll buy a single roll from the gas station. Gone in 3 days. Fine. I'll get another one. Gone in 3 days again. Finally. In the morning. I realized no more TP. Fine. However. I notice her going to the bathroom and I snickered, thinking that she doesn't have any TP. Nope. They bring their own TP to the bathroom. TL. DR. Roommates and wanted GF moved in with us, used up all the toilet paper, and is now hoarding her own, taking her own roll from their room to the bathroom. This would be fine, but whenever I replace the roll, she'll use all of mine up. Note, I haven't said anything because I'm moving out in December. And really, I don't care to confront over TP. Watching my daughter at gymnastics, woman next to me smacking her gum like a cow. I pulled out a pen and sat there clicking the button until she got fed up and left. This last 4th of July some friends and I went down to the pier to watch the fireworks. We were sitting down when this couple decided the perfect spot for them was standing directly in front of us. I had been drinking a bit so it seemed like a good idea to bark like a dog. Not like a mean pit bull or something, 
more like a high-pitched chihuahua. I do a really good impression by the way, they kept turning around looking for the dog until they realized it was me. I looked them in the eyes and started barking with an even higher pitch. I think they thought I was crazy because they just whispered to each other and left. The old man sitting next to me gave me a high five. Freshman year of university. Randomly assigned roommate. I had a lymph node infection. I thought it was just a bad hangover. And was bedridden for 4 days. Visibly very sick. The sucker decides those 4 days are the days to get COD from a thrift store and invite his friends to our room to play from midnight to 4. He'd always sleep from 5am 1pm. Second day of him giving me the old spicy COD chain. I would blast opera from my speakers from 6am, noon. Then I'd allow him around 10 minutes of snoozle time, and start it again. It's not much, but I don't have the energy to fight with people who post about their strong moral political beliefs on Facebook. What I do have is money and the ability to donate to Planned Parenthood in their names every time they post something that I disagree with. It's the most passive aggressive thing I do. My friends live in a duplex. The couple next to them argues like there's no tomorrow. Mostly the guy yelling. They've left notes before, but it never ends. They change their Wi-Fi network name to we hear you beating your wife. Three weeks with no result and it's now we still hear you beating your wife. I caught an international flight with two friends. It was 24 hours long and the first time I had ever been overseas. Something happened with the ticket allocation and we were split up into two and our friend Charlie was two rows back. I politely asked the lady sitting next to us if she would swap seats with Charlie and explain that we were traveling together and his seat was an aisle seat just like hers. She said um, number and promptly put her headphones in. Later in the flight she is trying to read and notices that her reading light is out. She asks me if she can turn mine on so that she can read. Dot. Seriously? I say, if you were sitting in Charlie's seat your light would work. Um no, I don't need to read, and I watched her read in the dark for a solid 5 hours. I would have turned the light on occasionally just to stop her eyes adjusting. If someone's rude to me I cover their seat in water, all over so there are no marks pools to spot, and watch as the realization slowly sets in. I left a note for one of my old roommates to stop being so passive aggressive. I was sitting in class one day and this girl behind me was being really annoying smacking her gum, talking, texting, which would have been okay except our desks were touching so every few seconds my desk would buzz. So I started typing things in a really large font. Things like this girl behind me is really loud and snippets of her conversations. She noticed and stopped. I actually got the idea from Reddit, so thanks, everybody. I recall that too. The typing of I think Ashley is a bad friend too in large text so they could see. I've posted this before, but I'll post it again, because it really was the most passive aggressive thing I've ever done. At my first apartment, I had an absolute butthole of an upstairs neighbor. He would be up till 3am playing music really loudly, then wake up at 6am and take a shower. Of course, being an old complex. I could hear his water and the pipes groaning every morning. I gave up complaining to the manager, such a nice old man, but not capable of dealing with conflict, after about 2 months of it. Now, butthole upstairs had a white pickup that he parked at the end of the units, right outside my bedroom window. He kept all his work gear, he was a house painter and gutter repairman, as best I can tell, in the truck overnight, without any cover over the bed or his gear. So, I invested in a little bird feeder to hang outside my window next to his truck. For the first week I only put seed mix in it. After that, for the rest of the year I lived there, I put a mix of dried blueberries, cranberries, cherries, and unhulled sunflower seeds in the feeder. It was expensive, but it was so worth it to see his white pickup and all of his ladders, gloves, paint trays, rollers, and tools covered in berry bird shit. Yep, passive aggressive. Yes. Worth it? Oh yes. A good family friend of mine is a frequent customer at the local coffee shop. At said local coffee shop there is one handicapped parking space located out front and several non-delegated spots. The family friend noticed another customer who constantly uses the handicapped spot to go in and order his coffee despite the fact that the manager on staff reminds him to move his car every day because they have several customers who need to use. 
the spot on a daily basis. One day the man pulled into the spot, went inside everyone was staring at him, ordered his coffee, proceeded to brush past the manager and walk towards his car. My family friend blocked his path at the door and told the man you need to stop parking in that spot. We are tired of you treating everyone here like crap. The man casually told him to mind his own business. My family friend then took the man's cup out of the guy's hands and dropped it on the floor. Opened the door for the man and said don't ever come back here. You're not welcome here. The man went back to his car, moved his car, called the cops. When the cops came the manager actually pretended that the man had dropped the cup. Nobody contested it. The guy hasn't been back. Epic win. That is the exact opposite of passive aggressive. I wish I had employed a similar passive aggressive tactic on the guy who sits directly behind me. He's insanely annoying such that he's infamously never sat with his actual team. They rush to fill any seats that come free. And there's long list of people who've said if you sit me near him I will quit. Seriously. Highlights include. He seems to have old smoker's lung throat problem such that his voice always escapes as a gurgled squeal. He can't help that but he shouts of course so it's akin to sharing the room with a banshee. He spends hours per day cramming Bombay mix into his mouth. He then chews it with his front teeth for maximum crunch volume. He'll still use the phone or shout at people while eating. Farts openly and often. Has an incredibly loud and annoying SMS received tone which needless to say is triggered several times per hour. Sometimes many times a minute as he conducts some of his extracurricular activities exclusively by SMS. Of course his desk phone habits are annoying too. Keypad tone set to on. Volume set to max and he opens many conversations using the speaker setting. He has dozens of keys and his security tags etc on a long chain which he slaps and drags about on his desk like a freaking poltergeist. That's right he's a banshee and a poltergeist. I cracked after weeks of this and told him to shut the freak up on a Friday morning when he was screeching at the team opposite solidly for an hour telling his version of what passes for jokes. He responded with abuse so I went unpunished but I still know I made a mistake being aggressive and swearing at work. On second thoughts I wished I'd killed him. With a stapler. Someone at Starbucks ordering for what must have been 10 people and trying to do it from memory and notes they'd taken on their phone. I literally pulled up a chair into the line behind them and sat down with an accompanying annoyed sigh. Really pee them off but they then got out of line and went back through after they figured out what they were forgetting. Inconsiderate checkout people are the worst. On a similar note, be who argue over coupons or crap like that. End up getting managers involved and end up burning 5 plus minutes over some minor dispute. I feel like chucking quarters at their heads to make them stop. Stores need a trap door in line that goes straight to heck for these demon spawn. I go into posts about being passive aggressive and mock them passive aggressively. And then they stalk you and downvote everything you do forever. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.